the beat goes on. The human heart is a truly amazing pump containing four essential valves. But when these valves begin to deteriorate, the quality of life for the patient diminishes severely. If a defective valve cannot be surgically repaired, the only alternative is replacement with an artificial valve or a human tissue valve. It's at the very heart of your existence. And each beat preserves another moment of life. Knowing what your heart needs to stay healthy throughout the years comes from being well informed. Caring for your heart so the beat goes on. In an average lifetime, the human heart beats more than two and a half billion times without ever pausing to rest. But when the heart's valves are defective at birth or weaken later in life, the heart cannot pump blood as efficiently. It must work harder to maintain the same cardiac output and may eventually fail. Such was the case with Josh Changer. A defective heart valve can place an extra burden on the heart. Healthy heart valves open easily and close completely. Each valve is made up of two or three fibrous tissue flaps, called leaflets, that act as little doors, opening and closing to control blood flow. Two of the heart's four valves control the inflow of blood, and two valves control outflow to the body. Heart valves can be defective either through the normal aging process, or they become calcified or thickened. Josh Changer's cardiac surgeon, Dr. Kevin Akala. Patients who have defective hearts congenitally or from birth are oftentimes discovered uh, either in their infancy or in their uh, younger childhood years uh, because of a murmur, which Josh had had for, for many, many years. Valve problems also can occur with injury, infection, or such illnesses as rheumatic or scarlet fever. Early morning, shortly before dawn, cardiac surgeon Dr. Kevin Akala is en route to Florida Hospital OR to perform open heart surgery. I perform between 550 and 600 procedures per year. And this includes everything from cardiac procedures, which are valves or bypasses, to lung procedures, which we set portion of lungs for tumors, to various vascular procedures. Majority of my work, though, is cardiac surgery work. I began working at a, a hospital, actually as an orderly in the emergency room, and once I began uh, in being involved in the in trauma or some of the surgical aspects of, of care that would come through an emergency room. At that point I knew I wanted to be a surgeon and then it was when I got into medical school I would make rounds on a Saturday with a heart surgeon and became a, really a passion uh, of mine to do cardiovascular surgery. This morning Dr. Akala first greets Michelle Changer who is waiting for her husband Josh to undergo surgery for a homograft heart valve replacement. You doing okay? Yeah. Right, it no was problem. three weeks earlier that Josh and Dr. Akala met for the first time. Some months prior to their meeting, Josh started to have various symptoms. Initial symptoms I had, I had heartburn. At night, lying in bed, I have this heartburn that I can't sleep. And I went to see the doctor, and he prescribed some medication for the heartburn. And after then, I started having chest pains. I went back to see him, and then he said I need to go see a cardiologist. Josh was diagnosed with what we call aortic stenosis, which means his aortic valve leaflets are not functioning appropriately, or they're stiff or calcified. So subsequently, they're not letting enough blood flow go through or by the valve to the rest of his body, making his heart have to beat harder and harder. The symptoms of aortic stenosis are fatigue, decreased exercise tolerance, shortness of breath with exertion, chest pain, dizziness or fainting most often associated with exertion, palpitation or the feeling of irregular heartbeats. I have a chair um, next to my toolbox that whenever I'm having chest pains I'll go and I'll sit down, I'll sit for a little while until it pass and then I'll go back to work. But I was told by Dr. Ackley not to lift anything above five pounds till I have this valve replacement done. But my work requires that I lift a lot of heavy stuff and move things around, so I'm taking a little easy now. Dr. Akala has determined that Josh needs to have his aortic valve replaced. In Josh's case, there were no other options. His valve was too far gone or too 
thickened and calcified to, to consider any other type of approach other than valve replacement. My wife and my staff talked about it and we decided that this was, that just has to be done. So we went back and saw Dr. Ackley and then we sat down and we decided on which valve we were going to use. If we are going to use an artificial valve or a human valve. One valve replacement option for Josh was a mechanical valve made entirely of artificial components. Each step in the past 20-year evolution of mechanical valves improved durability and performance. Although the modern-day mechanical valves are very reliable, one main disadvantage is the patient's lifelong reliance on blood thinners. Defective heart valves can either be replaced uh, with a different valve, whether it's a mechanical valve or a homograft, which is actually a, a preserved valve from another individual who's donated his heart or his valve uh, to be used by another person. And I'm an auto mechanic and I get lots of cuts and bruises and nicks here and there. And if I use an artificial valve and I have to take a blood thinner called Coumadin, and that'll make my blood very thin and if I get cut it'll take a very long time for it to stop bleeding. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to go with a human tissue valve. He and I came to the agreement that the homograft would be the best option for him. And we could do it as a valve and a semi-aortic root replacement which would give him a good valve for anywhere from 18 to 20 years. What I typically tell patients with homographs that at about 18 to 20 years they've got about a 70 75 percent freedom from reoperation. In other words there's about a 25 percent chance that in that time period Josh may need another reoperation. But then he will have gone 15 to 18 years with no cuminin not a noisy valve, and essentially a normal human valve uh, in place of his disease valve. I'm looking forward to have the surgery done. So it'd be better for me, my wife, children. I'll be with them a little while longer. Yes, Eddie. Thank you. But since I'm having a hard valve replacement and one of the valves that I've, that I've considered to use is a human tissue valve, makes me think differently about being an organ donor. So I think I, I will eventually sign that driver's license in the back and I would like to be an organ donor. The valve we're going to use today is called a cryopreserved aortic valve homograft. Homographs have been used since the 1960s and the extensive data we have on them has shown that in younger patients or in patients with infectious valve problems such as endocarditis, this is an excellent conduit. So this is the homograph now in place, in place of the patient's normal aorta, uh, which now will function as the patient's own aortic valve. Everything went very well. I'm real pleased. We took out the, the old aortic valve, mm -hmm. and the aortic valve, as we talked before, you know, should have three leaflets. As we suspected, it just had two, and they were thickened and very calcified and essentially not moving at all. So there's just no question, you know, that we could not have waited any longer to do this. But that's what's causing the pain. That's right. But he's doing super. Josh's convalescence in the hospital went very smoothly. He was in the hospital uh, in the intensive care unit two days, uh, went upstairs to our recovery area for another two days, and actually went home on the fourth post-operative day. He doesn't have to take any cumin or any blood thinner. We do have him take an aspirin every day. Uh, just as a general precaution. I feel much better knowing that I had the surgery done. It's been about 17 days since I had my surgery and um, I I'm feeling much better. I'm, I'm, I'm able to move around a lot. I'm able to lift things, move my hands and um, they, I'm not having as much pain that I was having before. I have a better outlook on life now. Donor shortage is, continues to be a universal problem. In instance with Josh's valve, here's an individual who has a brand new valve because this other individual chose to be a, an organ donor and provide Josh with that opportunity to have a human valve. I think it's the greatest gift of, of life in the event of someone's death that that person can do.